this paper this evening to assure Cabinet of the Council's readiness, but also to highlight some of the risk associated with um, its implementation. The Act becomes operational in April of this year, and there's some further provisions being introduced in 2016. The Council have been preparing for quite some time for the Act's, imp the Act's implementation, and we have a Care Act implementation group project group with the purpose of ensuring compliance with the Act's provisions. I welcome the duties placed on the local authority which emphasises the need to prevent, reduce or delay the need for services by promoting well-being and helping people to achieve outcomes that matter to them in their life. The recurrent themes throughout the Act and indeed the legal duty placed on local authorities is to prevent, delay and reduce the need for care and I wholeheartedly support this approach. The project group compiled a readiness assessment and that can be seen and I'm sure you've read it on pages 197 to 205 um, and some of the pieces of work include um, availability of information and advice, every person to have a personal budget, carers are placed on an equal footing with the person that they care for, and local authorities must arrange an independent advocate for those that can't advocate for themselves. So the, um, we have therefore identified and sought to further develop our workforce <coughs> development, in particular fo focusing on a strengths-based model of assessment. Instead of pe looking at people's needs, we're looking at what strengths they have, communications, both external and internal, system upgrades, and policy development. And last but not least, is the much talk about um, cap on care costs. It is just that, a cap on care that a person receives, which will be set at 72,000. It isn't an overall cap of 72,000. It doesn't include care home or nursing home costs for board and lodgings. It's only the aspect if somebody receives care and only applicable to the care element that that person receives. I'd like to thank Roger, and in particular Les Billingham and his team, who have worked tremendously hard to get us Care Act ready. And I feel very confident that we can go into April and be ready to face the Care Act. Uh, the, the biggest <coughs> challenge of this challenge is? Um, the biggest challenge is to really, at the mindset of instead of having a crisis intervention service, to actually start early on in our life cycle, to start the preventative measures, for example, eating a more healthy diet, um, cessation of smoking, so working with public health, um, increasing our exercise, particularly in our age 40 to 60 age group, rather than wait until 60 plus, and then often it's all too um, late and there's um, you know, lots and lots of people are on reams of um, medication leader rather than really to change their lifestyle perhaps in the early <coughs> days. And so it's the prevention side that we've got to change the mindset of, both in terms of staff and indeed the recipients of care.